Hey guys, in this video, I'll show you guys how to retrieve options data from TD Ameritrade's API. So if we click on options chains, so here are some of the parameters to get options data. You'll select your app. This will retrieve your API key. So I'm not going to click on it, but you'll want to select the app. Symbol, we'll use Apple. Contract type, I'll specify all. I'll leave this blank since we're retrieving all. I'll set this box equal to true. For strategy, I'll just select single. For interval, I'm just going to set that equal to one. I'll leave this box empty. For range, the default is all. And then for options type, we'll set that equal to all. I'm going to leave these blank. So after you fill out all the parameters you want, you're going to want to check this box for authentication. And then a new window will pop up. You'll set in your credentials to log into TD Ameritrade. So after you set that and you get this authenticated, you'll hit send and you'll get a response. And then here are the codes for the responses. But if you get no errors, you'll get the data populated in this box here. And then in the request, you'll get a link, which we're going to use. But you'll need to follow these steps in order to authenticate your account with your API key. Once you have done that, we can move on with R. So we're going to require two packages, JSON Lite and data table. Now I save my API key in an environment to keep it private, but you could always just hard code your API key in your functions. So here I'll write a function to get the options data. And in this function, all I'm going to pass is the ticker. So I'll provide the URL I'm using in the description below. So you'll paste that. And again, you could always hard code your API key. So this will be our URL. And then here, I'm just going to read JSON URL. Simplify vector. I'll set that equal to true. So we'll run this. All right, so here I'm going to store the options data in OC. And I'm going to call in Tesla options. So it may take a while depending on the size of the options list. So here we have a list. So if we take a look at OC, dollar sign, and then you'll get all the lists that are stored in OC. The ones I'm interested in are just these last two called put expiration date map and call expiration date map. These contain the options data for the ticker you're requesting. So we take a look at that. These are stored by expiration date. So if you hit dollar sign, you'll get all the expiration dates, which are quite a few. So here we'll just test one out just to see what the data looks like. So what I'll do now is I'll create a function to combine all the calls and puts into one nice data frame that we can store for later use. If you didn't get any data for this, it's probably because something went wrong with your authentication. There's a ton of material you could read up online depending on what error you get. So just Google the error. If not, then you could just message me and then I'll try and help out. So I'll clear this. So here I'm going to begin writing my function called OC2DF and I'm going to pass in this options list. So I'll begin by extracting the expirations. So these are going to be for the calls. The calls and the puts have the same number of expiration dates, but I want to separate these in case something goes wrong with either the calls or the puts. I'll be able to pinpoint whether the error came from the calls or from the puts. So that's why I'm separating these expirations, but essentially they're the same thing. 
So I'll do names. OC dollar sign call expiration date map. So we'll run that. So these are all the expirations available. We'll write one for the puts. All right, so this is going to be for the calls. So I'm going to store calls by running L apply as list. I'll pass in my call expirations. I'll create a function passing in each expiration date. So here I'll do OC dollar sign call expiration date map. I'm going to paste X, which is our expiration, and this will subset that expiration date calls. So here I'll set X equal to the first call expiration. So we take a look at OC. So return the list, and it looks like they're separated by strikes. So the next thing I need to do is extract all the strikes and I'll do that by running names of OC and then brackets brackets one. So these are all the strikes that are found in that expiration. All right, so next I'm going to pass in each strike, collect the data for that strike and then combine all the data together. So this will be for my data. I'll use L apply as list, pass in all the strikes. I'll do function Y and here I'll do OC double bracket. I'll put X and then outside of those brackets, I'll put in another two brackets and then I'll put Y inside of those brackets. So this will just subset OC for the expiration and this will subset the expiration and the strike. So I'll run this line. So now we get the data for all the strikes in that particular expiration. So now we'll just have to combine them by running our bind list. I'll pass in the data and then I'll use use names set that equal to true and then just in case we'll run fill true. So if we run that line, now we get a nice data frame with all the data for all the strikes and that expiration. So we're going to have to repeat this process for all the expiration dates and that will save into this variable called calls. So I'll go ahead and run this block. Looks like I forgot a Y. So I'll run this. We take a look at calls. Now it's a list and each of these are the calls for each expiration. So what I have to do now is do our bind list calls and then use names. We'll set that equal to true. Fill, we'll set that equal to true. So if we run that line, now we get a nice data frame with all the options data. So I'll repeat the same process for the puts. And we can just copy these lines, paste them here, and then replace calls with puts. and then replace call expiration date map with put expiration date map. Also, I'm going to pass in the put expirations and that should be it. So I'll go ahead and run this block and then run our bind list for the puts. 
we'll take a look at the puts. And it looks like we got everything because the number of calls matches the number of puts. And so does our number of columns for each. All right, so now I'm going to combine the puts and the calls into one data frame by running our bind calls and puts. So when I ran this line, this actually saved into call. So I have to rerun this. So it saves to calls with an S. So if I run this line, now we get one data frame with all the calls and the puts. You can tell them apart because this column will contain whether there are calls or puts. So here we have the bid and the ask, the last price, the mark, bid and ask size. We even get open, high, low, close data and volume as well. Trade date. I'm not sure why it returned NA, but it might have to do with your specific account. So maybe if you trade one of these options, this will come up. For these two columns, I'm going to format these so we get an actual timestamp. We get the net change and some nice Greeks, open interest, the time value, theoretical option value, the volatility. These were all set to NAs. We get the strike price the expiration date, the number of days to expiration, expiration type, the last trading day. I guess we could set these columns to return timestamps as well. The multipliers are all set to 100 and some other pertinent data for that specific option. All right, so here I'll do all and I'll type in trade time and long. I'll convert these two as POSIX CT. I'll do all trade time and long. Since these are milliseconds, I'm going to have to divide by a thousand to get the number of seconds. And then the origin is 1970 0101. So if we run that line and look for trade time and long, now we get a nice timestamp. I guess the timestamp for these are before 1970, so that means that they haven't traded. So next I'll convert quote time and long. So I'm just going to copy this line, change this to quote time and long. I'll run that line, take a look at our data. So quote time and long actually return the timestamp for this particular quote. So for most of these, it looks like it returned the last second before the market actually closed. So now we'll take a look at our other timestamps. We'll change the expiration date. All right, so I'm gonna copy one of these. This will be for expiration date. Same thing, divide by a thousand, set the origin equal to 1970. Take a look at all. Now we get the expiration date. We'll do the same thing for last trading day by repeating the process. run that line, take a look at our data, and now we get a timestamp for that column. So it looks like we don't need to format anything else, so we'll just return all. So I'll go ahead and run this function. All right, so I'm going to test my function out by running OC to DF. I'll pass in my options list we got from TD Ameritrade. 
and then we'll hit enter. We'll take a look at all. So now you have a nice data frame that you can save into your database or you can just save it into your working directory so we can analyze the data in a future date. So here I'm just going to run another example to make sure this is working correctly. So I'll write get options change TD. The ticker will be Apple. And then I'll run OC to DF. OC is equal to Apple. Take a look at Apple. And now we have options data for Apple. All right, so we can even try and subset our data to inquire about some options by running Apple put call. I'm going to search for calls. And then here I'll place an ampersand run Apple strike price equals 395. So here are the call options with the strike price of 395 with different expiration dates. And then you could just analyze depending on what you're looking for, the prices, the Greeks, open interest and volume. All right, guys, well, that's it for this video. I really hope it helped out. Let me know if you have any questions. And as always, thanks for watching.